Hey guys, Jessica Henry here. Wanted to welcome you today to my studio. I have done a still life and I thought it'd be fun to share it with you how I did it. And I have, um, I found some beautiful figs and some Prosecco and some goat cheese and just thought I'd put together something getting out of this really hot weather and just staying cool in the studio. Alright, thanks so much guys. All right, well, jumping in, um, I have a linen panel here that is 19 inches tall by 13 and a half inches wide. And I am just toning the canvas here to prepare it for the painting. I like a middle tone range over it. And uh, I just give it a little bit of texture there. So I will take burnt umber and ultramarine blue and a little bit of Gamsol and thin it down a little to sort of draw out where I want the main objects to sit on my canvas and <clears throat> just thinking about how tall I want the objects to be and how far down I want things to go. So I'm taking into consideration the four edges of my canvas and where everything is going to sit in relation to that distance. Once I kind of get the idea of this is how tall I want things to go, this is where the bottom of my objects are going to sit on here, then it's easier for me to calculate what sort of size and um, placement the things will be in. So I'm, I've decided that the wine glass would be gla uh, best right there, I guess it's a champagne flute, <laughs> would be best in that place and that size. So in relation to that, the figs would be about the size that they actually are in real life. And then I begin placing them where I see them in the context of my setup. And just sketching things out, I'm thinking about where the foot of that wine glass is. And sometimes I'll adjust things as I'm drawing things out just to move it over a half inch or whatever as it seems appropriate in my painting. Because as Impressionist painters, we just simply record our impressions based on reality. So I'm just working on laying in exactly where the shape of the pieces of cheese are going to lay in all of this and the figs and trying to get the correct positioning in there as accurate as possible. And of course, the flute. Um, <laughs> oftentimes I'll, I'll find that I'm just sort of relaxed and sort of leaning my head one way or the other and I've come to find that with wine glasses and flutes you have to stay very straight and I, I don't know if you can see it in the video but I will lock my pinky on the edge of the canvas, oh, like that, and use that straight edge to help draw lines straight down, like that, and that gives me uh, a, an easier chance at symmetry. So this is a painting I threw in here that I did, um, just talking about composition and balance, edges. I had just finished this one not too long ago and just wanted to use it as an example of just layout and design. So I had the um, champagne bottle over on the other side of the flute and I, I liked it better right there. I, I moved it over a little and found that it had a, a better reading. It was too off balanced off to the left. So by putting it behind the loaf of bread I just felt that it drew the eye sort of through the painting and up in center. You can see it how that works better. There's my arrangement. And then I began erasing and pulling out highlights. And so that's what I was thinking about here. Just where I want the eye to go throughout the painting. And you can see with the white in there, that is that is where the main setup is gonna go. And this is, this is my arrangement with the light in there. And these are real easy to set up in your own home. Just get a counter or table 
and a spotlight and I block out the light using cardboard, whatever you have to, to make it work. So I'm laying in the full value range here, getting the darks in place and um, just hitting those anchors where I want everything to go. The lightest lights, the darkest darks and working it out that way. So now I'm going to begin laying in color and I'll just take little dabs of the color and then I'll paint them together instead of mixing them up with the palette knife. I find I have more control and it feels a little more painterly to mix the colors together like this. So I'm working on the color for the cheese because it's pretty much my focal point, center of interest, and it's my lightest light right in the center. So I wanted to get that value accurate from the beginning. So when when you get your values accurate in the beginning, you have a better chance throughout the whole painting to get use that as your scale. So I'm just, and to do that I just used um, cadmium yellow pale, yellow ochre, and some white. And there I, I rolled my brush a little, flattened it, and scooped the paint flat. I use all flat brushes. Um, I, I believe this is a size 2. I scrape like that to get a nice chiseled straight edge. And then um, what I'm working on here now is just laying in the dark accents uh, of all the figs. And that is mostly alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. Getting that beautiful yellow fig color. If I had just used straight cadmium yellow pale, it would have been a little too um, brilliant. So I, I added a little bit of yellow ochre into that just to neutralize and tone it down a little. And I wanted to get the correct chrome, um, brilliant tone of color in place. I didn't want it too gaudy and, and bright, but I did want some rich jewel tone colors in there. And you should know too that oil paint dries a little darker the next day. So I always paint the colors a little bit more vibrant on the first day than what I actually see them, knowing that they're going to dry darker. And then I can always just put a little piece of paint over them the next day to pop that color a little brighter. So just working on um, just refining some of those colors, beautiful, rich, bright tones. I'm laying in the colors of the cutting board. Um, what I liked about this arrangement was that I had that beautiful warm tone of the cutting board blending up into the figs, up into the loaf of bread, and then the yellow gold tones echoed through the label of the bottle as well as the Prosecco. So I thought that there was that interesting balance that way. And it was very warm, the objects that I chose, so I chose to have a cooler tone background to balance that out. Okay, so working on the bread, and that is just yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a um, little bit of white and some blue just to neutralize it a little. And I'm always thinking about edges. Of course, I could see a lot more detail to that loaf of bread, but I had to choose what was most important, keeping the eye focused right in the middle area there. I had to sort of subdue what was going to back, be back behind it. Always thinking about the edges. And... Um, keeping things quiet. <laughs> so I'm, I didn't have the Prosecco in the glass yet, so I just wanted to get a little bit of the suggestion of glass before I, I went further. So thinking about the stem, and I knew that these colors would alter a little bit once the Prosecco was in the glass. I, um, I have here an example of a fish painting I did, um, this loaf of bread, again the same idea, the edge, the top edge of that loaf goes way back, and the glass here, I'm always looking for edges that I can lose, <clears throat> and I do an example of this fish painting, not the whole painting, but painting a fish in another video if you're interested in that. So getting back to the bread, that whole back portion of that loaf is going to be I know I want it more lost than what it's showing up in reality. So just keeping that in mind, keeping my eye focused on exactly where I want the viewer to look at all times. And that's where taking my impression, for example, in this painting, 
See that loaf of bread way in the back? <clears throat> I kept that really neutral as well as the background there. I used the background to really help support the main characters of the painting. And so, um, I know I've talked about backgrounds before. I just love studying them. And um, so I'm working on here just a little bit of the fabric. And I'm just using ultramarine blue, titanium white, and a little bit of yellow ochre to neutralize it. Keeping the shadows of the blanket, the um, fabric, really cool. Blues, the highlights are very warm. Um, so I'm just popping in a few more highlights throughout the painting. There's a little bit more close-up of what I've been doing so far. I'm going to open this bottle. I have a lot of experience opening champagne bottles, so this should be kind of interesting. <laughs> Now I do something like this. I guess it's Prosecco, so it's not really the same thing. Oh! Didn't see that coming! <laughs> Okay, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, I got the Prosecco poured and I'm ready to start painting that in the glass. And this is one of my favorite things to paint. Um, so I'm just using cadmium yellow pale and yellow ochre for the most part. Working on getting that feeling of it, that, that transition. Whenever you're painting glass, you always want to be cognizant of the color that's behind it. And in this case, of course, I had that very black background. So I had that down sort of first, but I left parts of it rubbed out in white where I knew that there would be a highlight because if you put it all black and dark behind something and then you try to put a highlight over the top, that darkness kind of shines through the paint. So if you can, it'll be cognizant of where your highlights are gonna go. So I'm placing in where I know when I look at the glass and I can see these dark masses, I go ahead and put those in. Also squinting down to see where my edges are lost because that is really going to give the illusion of form when you can lose an edge. If everything was sharp and clear, um, it wouldn't read accurately. A lot of the beauty of painting is learning how to see and how we see. Um, and that's a point in case here with the, the glass is you can focus and zero in on your setup and you can see every sharp edge and little tiny sparkle and but it's you have to choose those things that are most important that are going to tell the story and um, you'll see in the painting of this this is um, only sped up just a little bit I didn't cut anything out of the actual painting of this I only sped it up a little and you'll see um, kind of what I pick and choose about it throughout this the painting of this um, glass of Prosecco and um, I do actually have slight astigmatism in my eyes so when I look at that glass I can see the sparkles are a little bit blurry so I kind of paint it that way and it has that that feeling of reality um, you can get that same effect just by squinting but you can see here how I start at the top with a darker tone and as it goes towards the bottom the light comes through that glass and lights up the bottom just it glows and so I, I gradate the paint as I go down in the liquid to be brighter at the bottom and then it's sort of reverse at the top if you have light on one side at the top it'll be light on the other side and um, so learning how to see it's not about every single little teeny tiny detail but about when you look at the center of interest of anything you're trying to paint what do you see peripherally and that's how you have to paint those things paint them as though you're looking at them peripherally and then your painting will read more realistic and accurate and I'm just popping in a few of these highlights I'm content with the the tones for the background of my glass so I'm putting in a few of these highlights which is basically just cadmium yellow pale and white a little bit of yellow ochre right in there and again this is a size four um, it's actually a synthetic brush flat I like it because it holds a really sharp chiseled edge 
and I'm able to get in there for some tiny details. And uh, just when I squinted at the glass, I saw these different highlights and little zingers, I call them. And just popping those in. It's, it's again, it's all a matter of picking and choosing which ones are going to best work to tell my story. And so, you know, you don't want them all in and you're always looking for what edges you can lose. So I'm softening the edges. If those edges were really sharp and clearly painted, it wouldn't have the illusion of being round. Um, I share a painting at the end of this video that I did that has a scroll of paper and whenever you're painting things like paper or flower petals you want a sharp crisp edge because it, it has a feeling of flatness but anytime you paint something round like peaches or a glass or anything like that you want a soft edge and some edges if you can lose them all together connect them into the background connect them to another object it gives the feeling a sense of the painting a whole sense of unity and you want that so again, just cleaning up some of my areas where the highlights were and refining shapes. I wanted a little bit of a crisper edge there and on each side. And as you can see, nowhere am I blending. Um, I'm just using little smaller strokes. I'll wipe my brush off if I want it to sort of mix with the background color a little bit more. But that's, that's all I'm doing for that. I love these little highlights. There's the setup. Now with the highlights, you'll see in a minute, I take my brush, I wipe it off, and I kind of stretch the highlight out a little down in the liquid. I feel that it, it gave it more of a feeling of, um, like there's substance to this liquid. Oh, and I'm doing the bubbles. <laughs> it looks like I'm really nervous or had too much coffee, but I really didn't. <laughs> I did want to put them in, but I didn't want to sit and do little teeny tiny dots because I thought that it would kind of kill that effect. So I just suggested them. Just a few sparklers. Love those little, little tiny accents that do so much. And I kind of spread them out a little. Just, they look like they go zing. I like that effect. <laughs> it's my astigmatism. <laughs> so in a minute here, I take my brush. Well, that's the foam. <clears throat> that's the foam for the on the top of Prosecco. I did the lighter in the middle and then kind of softened it towards the outside edges so it looked like it went around the edges of the glass. And then because I didn't want a sharp edge, I just drug it down a teensy bit into the liquid. And then this is what I was talking about, taking my brush and um, just smoothing the, the highlights out a little bit. I'm working on some of the glass. To do the glass, I, it's mostly um, you squint down you try not to get overwhelmed by all the different shades and you just look to see, you know, in that case I saw um, bounced light coming up into the glass from down below. I had the countertop and the bread and um, just popped that in. A little bit of highlights here and there. Cleaning up the edges too, using the background to help just isolate the form. Bringing that down. And then you'll see as I pull it, the grayish tone up the stem, I lighten the pressure on my brush to let it sort of blend a little bit into that dark. Just to get that look of it being, that stem was sort of a chisel cut, beveled um, thing. And I kind of wanted to pull some of that out a little. And this was a, an example. I have a few paintings here that I did. I'm just showing the different breads and grapes and things that I've done. Um, another glass and some grapes. Talking about transparency here too is just using those cadmium colors for that transparency. This was a painting I did um, 
with Grand Marnier and some transparent oranges. A lot of fun. Again, it's just the cadmium tones that create that illusion of glowing. And then I'm, now I'm working on the bottle. And what I liked about this, the way the light was hitting the bottle, is it had this wonderful movement of light. It hit strongest about in the center, and then it, it sort of gradated upwards to shadows. And I didn't want the edge of the bottle to be really noticeable, so I kept it really close in value range to the background and just drug a little bit of a highlight into it. So working on the label, of course, I, there was no way I was going to do all the lettering. I didn't think it was essential to the story. You have to pick and choose. And, and to me, lettering is just distracting in a painting. It's not what the painting's about. So I liked the value ranges that I saw on the label and thought that it was just beautiful the way it turned and went back into obscure shadow. So that's what I was working on here, and I just used a lighter pressure on my brush to allow that to just sort of fade into the shadow. And I pulled in a little bit of the highlight on the edge of the bottle, just to separate it just a little from the shadow. Not very much. Hmm. Always thinking about ways that I can make things um, either pop or not scream for attention. You're the director and you always have to decide should this be speaking, should this be quiet, should this whisper or shout, um, how much time and attention should I give this area, that area. I liked this gold label on here and that is just cadmium yellow pale with some white and then as it goes back towards shadow I used more yellow ochre and then burnt sienna back towards the shadow and popped in that highlight and then I just drag a little bit of tone over it, like right in here to help soften that edge. And up in there too. Same thing. I didn't want to draw the eye right off the canvas, so I didn't make that as detailed as I saw it in real life. But just kept it enough, with just enough information to make it interesting. I'm working on the stem. And again, it's an area where, yeah, you can get <laughs> overwhelmed by all the different little tones that you see. But... You have to pick and choose. You know, this is not what the show's about. The figs and the cheese and the glass um, with, of Prosecco is. So I chose to keep it simple, yet um, try to make it look like glass. So that's just all I was working on there in that lower portion of the stem, as well as the little foot. Has to read accurate. <laughs> if the drawing is off, and it's slightly asymmetrical, it's not going to read right. So you really do have to take the time to get it symmetrical. Now again here, I worked on losing that top edge of the loaf of bread, but I did want some flour back there just to keep that back corner from becoming dead and stagnant. So I added a little flour to the top of the bread, and I'll kind of blend that in a little bit so it's not super jumping for attention, but just a little bit. And that is just, um, you know, cadmium, excuse me, ultramarine blue and titanium white. And the bread I painted with, um, again, this is just the same limited palette I'm using. Um, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, little blue to neutralize it. Where the bread goes down to the bottom side of the loaf, it's just more cad yellow pale. And here I'm at this part of the painting now where I'm looking for things and ways to connect things into other things. The bread I connected to the bottle, the cheese rind I'm connecting to the rest of the cheese. Um, then so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going around, and you might it might look like I'm flicking my brush, but just looking for all the ways that I can connect things. I think it gives it a sense of unity. That shadow was too dark, so I needed to lighten it a little, and that looked. Um, was a wrong tone. I needed it to be cooler blue. So then I work, um, again, just to bring it back into the background. I work on the background a little. I love Chardin, and I've studied his backgrounds for years, and just tried to create a sense of atmosphere. I share a painting here at the end where that was my one of my primary objectives, to really get that feeling of atmosphere in that background. And this is that painting called Perseverance in Motion. 
my objective here was to really try to get that feeling of air in and around all the objects. And there's the scroll of paper I mentioned earlier. And so that's what I'm working on here. I'll take my brush with just a little bit of paint. And this is a bristle now, and I'm just scumbling a little bit lighter tone than what I had in the background on, just to sort of create, it kind of looks like air a little bit. And so this is the painting up close. The whole painting took about um, 14 hours or so to paint. and. Um, I did enjoy it, and I always try uh, to do new challenges and just have a lot of fun with it. Thank you guys for joining me and for subscribing. That's awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Happy painting. All right. Well, that wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. And um, Don't forget, if you enjoyed it, to like and subscribe. All right. Thanks, guys.